Okay, just a quick video. Um, I'm in New York State, upstate New York. We have one day this week where it's gonna be in the 60s and relatively dry. So I'm trying to get a lot done. Um, sometimes a last minute call to a customer is a great way to go. For instance, I power washed this deck recently and they want me to paint it as well. And um, I need to let it warm up a little bit before I can do some power washing for another client. So I called them up this morning and said, hey, you want me to paint your deck today? So first off, that's one good tip, just to get you more work, okay? And uh, to, to fill in your schedule. Here's the other thing. When you power wash a deck or anything else that can be painted, it's a good upsell opportunity, right? Power wash the deck, especially if there's some peeling paint like there is here, you know? Offer to paint it for them, okay? Um, even if you're not a painter, it's really not that hard. So just something to do here, okay? Just finished scraping some stuff. I'm gonna blow it off and get to work. All right, more later, bye. While we're talking about painting, let's talk about a pro tip here. So the customer had their own, their old paint, and so I had to get a new one, but the color match is not exact. So what do you do, okay? The simple answer is you, you do something called boxing, which is what they call it. I don't know why they call it that. Mix the two together in a bucket real well, and then, you'll have a, a, a blended paint. Whereas if you were to start with the old one and then switch to the new one, it might be obvious where you left off and it may not be a good look. So mix them together, okay? Deck power washed, scraped, and painted. Of course, we power washed uh, last week. Had a nice day today, so got that done. So one nice thing about when your commercial customers trust you is that they just give you the key and they say, okay, you know, you can come and go as you please. Take a second to talk about technique. When you're doing upper windows, which I could technically reach these, but I'll show you a technique, right? Two techniques. One, when you're doing glass, you can actually go like this. Pull the water, pull it back down, and then you can go the other way too, which if you do it just right, you can actually go both directions. You can go like this, and then you can pull it back like this. And then you can make sure that the top is nice and clean, and then you can finish. Now, this looks like it's 18 inches wide, but it's not. So for that reason, that's why I have to do straight pulls down, right? Now if you're doing a straight pull down, first thing is you want your squeegee to be nice and dry. So it doesn't leave water spots at the very top. So you wanna pull right up into the corner at an angle so that as you rotate the squeegee, it pulls the water out of the corner, okay? You wanna pull down a couple of times to make sure the water's good. And when you get to the bottom, you wanna lift up the squeegee so that again, as the squeegee rotates, right, it's gonna pull the water all the way into the corner and then you can pull it out from the water so that you can get it. Yeah. So let me show you again, right? Here's another pro tip. When you're doing this, you wanna angle the squeegee in the direction that you're going. So you might have noticed that as I was doing this side, the right side of the squeegee was lower than the left side. Now why in the world would I do that? Where do you think the water's going? So suppose I go this way. You see that? I left the line there. Left the line right there, which you may not be able to see. Left the line because the water's trailing up to the right side. If you do it at an angle, so that the one side of the squeegee is lower than the other, like this, then all the water is directed to the other end of the squeegee in the direction of travel so that finally when you're done, the water is left in the corner, right? Now this one didn't come out very good. I gotta pull a little bit more. There's a lot of water on the squeegee now, but let's try it again. There you go. Now here's another one, okay? When you're doing these kinds of windows where you can't fit the squeegee in, here's a trick. You wanna come in toward the corner, okay? So I'll show you in one motion. Coming like this, you're gonna go at an angle, like that, one corner to the other, and again, and then you can finish right to that other corner. Remember the rotation? Pull the water away so it pulls it off the sill, okay? Then, if you're, if you're good about it, you can actually just take your squeegee and wipe the sill, okay? So, that's your tutorial for today. Pro tip that I forgot. So I did all these interior windows, 
And obviously the sills were gonna be wet, right? And you're gonna have little blemishes here and there that you have to hit with a rag. I don't do go back and do that detail work with a rag until the very end. Now, if you're in a huge building, you can't do that. It's a relatively small restaurant. There's nobody else in here. I don't have to worry about the customers or the staff. So I go all the way to the end. Why do I do that? Two reasons. First, it takes too much time to stop at every window that you've just completed and go back through with a rag. You have to keep changing tools. You don't want to do that. That takes too much time. The next thing is that because the sills are wet, they're going to be super wet and you're going to dirty your rags very quickly. You're going to quickly run out. If you go all the way to the end, by then a lot of it's dried. You can do your spot checks up top and then you can do your sills. Now, I have a separate dirty rag just for the sills because they're going to be really dirty with bug goop and all that kind of stuff. And then I have a separate rag for doing the actual glass touch-ups. Okay. So that saved me probably an extra 20 minutes to do this restaurant, maybe more. And of course, all that little bit adds up when you have a full schedule opportunity. They have mirrors in this restaurant, huge mirrors in fact. You can't see that one over there. They have huge mirrors, okay? You want to also offer to do their, their, their mirrors as well. You, these are accessible, but some clients are like, yeah, just go ahead and do it. And you might make an extra 15 to 20 bucks on a job with something that takes you maybe an extra five. Here's minutes. another pro tip that you don't think about when you're first starting out and the customer's gonna notice. This area behind the push bar for the, for the uh, door, you can't get a squeegee back there. It's too thin, too tiny to get back there, okay? So the first thing is it's gonna leave a drip line all back there that you can see as you're coming in from the outside. There's two tips I'm gonna give you. The first thing is do the top ones first. Why would you do that? Because if you do the top one and then immediately do the bottom, this whole area down here is eventually gonna drip down and you're gonna see the drips underneath, okay? Here's the next thing. Take your rag, which you should always have several of them on you. Take your cleanest rag, push it down in between, and then you can take both sides, it's better with two hands, and you can push against the glass like this and go back and forth and it'll dry the glass. When you get to the end, you just pull it out like that and it's nice and clean back there. Now this is not a good example because I'm using uh, one hand, but you get the point. Put the rag back there and then you can finish the job nicely. Now this, that is a clean piece of glass. two-sided one one side is just for wet men and then the other side is for scrubbing right so usually I hit it with the wet side first get it going and then I'll switch over to the green side you just saw to really get a good scrub there. Now it's good to scrub from side to side and then top to bottom you want to start at the top and work your way to the bottom. Why is that? Any dirt you get, you don't want it to end up at the top. You want it to be at the bottom so it's easy to clean, right? So that's that. Now, with these chairs in the way, that'd be more challenging. So I think I'll separate the video for you guys. These tables back. Be heavy. squeegees because they can do tricks. They can change angle, right? So I'm able to do this at this angle. When you get to the end, finish strong, rotate, pull the water away. Usually if you do it that way, it won't leave anything on the glass. This is an exception, but anyway. Same thing. So, this one I like 
to do with a little more of a straight pull. And then you just have to watch, because you don't want to ride at the edge. It's really easy to end up on that because it's sloped toward the glass. So the squeegee kind of wants to ride that ramp. So again, we get to the end. Rotate a little bit and finish strong. Okay? The holster makes things easier too. And then of course, get your rag involved and finish up. What I've learned the hard way is that customers are always gonna expect that you do the sill of the window. So just do it, don't. You, you can offer to do it and then consider charging a bit more. But for most people, they're gonna consider the frames to be part of the deal. Now, I'm not gonna go and scrub the entire frame. I'm just gonna clean the areas that we, we wet day to day, uh, but just something to keep in mind so that your customers are satisfied. Now, I use my pole to get areas that I can't reach from the ground. So you just put your cloth on there and then you can clean it real quick. All right, see you later.